Hello. Welcome to this video, which gives a rough outline of the principles of flight of a helicopter. As I have never flown a helicopter, and as helicopters fly by magic, there may be some discussion points in the remarks. This video is purely from my own research. I hope you enjoy it. The objectives of this video are as follows. To give a brief revision of basic principles of flight, which includes airflow over an aerofoil, rotor airflow, helicopter lift vector, angle of attack, and basic lift equation. To look at the lift equation in relation to a rotor blade design, how we change lift on a rotor, how we get lateral control, and how we get your control. The very basic idea of how a wing works is based on its shape. In very simple terms, the wing shape is an aerofoil shape. In flight, this aerofoil changes the airflow both above and below the wing. Faster air over the top of the wing produces low pressure, and slower air below the wing produces high pressure. This pressure difference produces a lift force. Although the wing surface produces lift all the way along the surface, we describe the lift as acting from one point. We call this point the center of pressure. Clearly there needs to be an airflow over the aerofoil for it to create lift. This is easy in an aeroplane. The aeroplane accelerates along a runway until there is sufficient airflow over the wing until it produces enough lift for the aeroplane to fly. Clearly a helicopter doesn't do this, and instead it creates airflow over the aerofoil, called a rotor blade, by rotating it at speed. As a rotor blade is an aerofoil, it produces lift all along the surfaces of the blade. However, for ease of understanding, particularly as there are multiple numbers of blades, the lift produced on a rotor blade system is calculated to act at one point. This is usually the center of the rotor shaft, and the lift produced is called the lift vector. The pilot has to be able to control this lift vector to control the helicopter. How we do this is explained later on. At this stage it is worth reviewing the angle of attack on an aerofoil. In simple terms, an aerofoil has a line running from the front edge to the back edge of the shape. This is called the cord line. As the aerofoil flies through the air, it will meet an oncoming airflow. The angle between the direction of the airflow and the cord line is called the angle of attack. This is an important aspect of helicopter lift generation. Now we very quickly review the lift equation. This is important as we need to understand what helicopters can and can't do to vary the lift vector. The basic lift equation, for the amount of lift produced, is half Cl, times V squared, times S. Cl is the coefficient of lift, which is explained later. V is the speed of the aerofoil through the air, and S is the surface area of the aerofoil. So what part of the aerofoil, or rotor blade, can we change? Firstly, can we change the airspeed of the blade? As you recall from earlier, airspeed over the blade is generated by rotating the rotor system. Can we increase or decrease the rotation speed? There are two main forces acting on a wing. Lift, which creates a lever force at the end of the blade, and centrifugal force, which puts a force on the blade trying to pull it away from the mast. If we increase the rotor speed, we run the risk of the blade detaching from the mast due to the centrifugal force. This is not good, as we don't want to lose any blades. Centrifugal force helps the blade remain flat and not fold upwards due to lever force. If we reduce rotational speed, the centrifugal force reduces and is then unable to overcome lever force. The result is that the lever force folds the blade upwards. There is some leeway with the blades moving up or down, which we will come on to later. However, it is safe to say that the lift vector cannot be changed by changing the rotation speed of the rotor system. What about the surface area of the blade? In an aeroplane, 
we can artificially increase the surface area of a wing by extending flaps and slats, as shown. This in turn increases the lift produced from the wing at a given speed. However, fitting blades with flaps, slats or other mechanisms to increase area would be too technically complicated, be a large weight penalty, make rotor blades too inflexible, and would not be cost effective. Therefore, changing the surface area would not be viable or possible. So, the final part of the equation is the coefficient of lift CL, but can we change that? The coefficient of lift is made up of a number of elements, namely, air density, wing design, which includes the factors listed here, and, the angle of attack. Air density is not under the pilot's control, and we have discovered that changing the blade design during flight is not possible. This leaves us the angle of attack. We can indeed change the angle of attack, and this is what a helicopter design utilizes. As a reminder, the angle of attack is the angle between the direction of the incoming airflow and the aerofoil cord line. The greater the angle of attack, the more lift is produced for a given speed. There is a limit to this angle, but this is not discussed in this video and the smaller the angle of attack, the less lift is produced for a given speed. So how is the angle of attack changed on a rotor blade? The rotor blade is attached to the rotor mast via a pitch change bearing. This allows the blade to rotate on the bearing whilst attached to the mast. The bearing mechanism is attached to a pitch link, or connecting rod as the Americans call it, which can move up and down. This in turn rotates the blade. This then increases the angle of attack. The pitch link is connected to a piece of equipment called the swash plate. The swash plate is a metal disc attached to the rotor mast which rotates with the mast. The swash plate is able to both tilt and move up and down. As the swash plate moves up, it pushes the pitch link upwards. As described before, this rotates the blade to increase the angle of attack. The swash plate is controlled by the pilot via the flight controls. In this model, you can see how the mechanisms fit together, from the pitch link, the pitch change bearing, the swash plate, and the rotor mast. The first requirement of a helicopter is to control the amount of lift that is produced from the rotor system. In other words, how to increase or decrease the lift vector. The pilot does this by using a control called the collective lever, or collective for short. This is shown in this photo, and is usually placed at the left-hand side of the pilot. The collective lever moves the swash plate up and down. As you can see in this diagram, the lever in the down position gives low angle of attack, and if pulled upwards, gives a greater angle of attack. How does this affect the lift vector? Lever down means low angle of attack, which gives a small lift vector. Lifting the lever increases the angle of attack, therefore you get a greater lift vector. In this animation, you can see how the collective works. Pulling the collective lever upwards moves the swash plate upwards. This in turn pushes all the pitch links upwards together, which causes all the blades to rotate on the pitch change bearing. As the angle of attack increases on all blades equally, the amount of lift increases from all blades. This increases the lift vector. Conversely, as the collective lever is lowered, the swash plate lowers, the pitch links rotate the blades to reduce the angle of attack, so the lift vector reduces. It is worth mentioning that the collective lever moves all blades together at the same time. So if the helicopter was stationary on the ground, raising the collective lever would increase the lift vector, and the helicopter would rise off the ground vertically. 
Conversely, if the collective lever is lowered, the lift vector is reduced, and the helicopter would descend vertically to the ground. So, we now know how to increase the lift vector, and consequently we know how to move the helicopter vertically. However, we also want to move the aircraft laterally, in other words, forwards and backwards, and side to side. The lift vector can not only be used to lift the helicopter off the ground, but it can also be tilted to provide a lateral force to move the helicopter. Tilting the lift vector produces a thrust vector in the direction of tilt. This thrust vector then moves the helicopter in that direction. As stated previously in this video, there is leeway on the rotor blade to move up and down from the horizontal. Some helicopter blades have hinges to allow this, and other helicopters are designed for the blade to bend. Either way, centrifugal force will regulate this movement. As the lift vector is at right angles to the rotor system, tilting the rotor will tilt the lift vector. Of course, the pilot would need to control the rotor tilt, which brings us back to the swash plate. The swash plate not only moves up and down the rotor mast, but it can also tilt in any direction. From the diagram you will see that the swash plate is tilted. On the left hand side the swash plate is lower. If you recall, lowering the swash plate pulls the pitch links down, which in turn reduces the angle of attack. Likewise, the swash plate is higher on the right hand side which leads to a greater angle of attack. The resulting reduction of lift on the left blade allows it to drop, and increase of lift on the right blade allows it to rise. The result tilts the rotor system and hence the lift vector. From the animation you will see that as the swash plate tilts, it creates a circular up and down movement for the pitch links. As described earlier, this sets the angle of attack of the blades at any one point to allow the rotor system to tilt as one disc. You can see the angle of attack continually change, as the link moves round. To control the tilting of the swash plate, the pilot has a control called the cyclic. The cyclic is similar to a joystick, and is positioned at the center of the pilot, as shown. In simple terms, the cyclic controls the lateral movement of the helicopter. Moving the cyclic left or right, changes the lift vector so the helicopter moves left or right. Likewise, moving the cyclic forwards or backwards, moves the helicopter forwards or backwards. So we now know how the helicopter is moved laterally, and we know it can be moved backwards and forwards, and side to side. However, we also require the helicopter to yaw, so that the nose can be turned to different directions in the hover. For this, we rely on Newton's third law of motion. For every action, there is an opposite and equal reaction. In this context, if a weight is rotated in one direction, the resulting force is to rotate whatever is attached to it in the opposite direction. This is called the torque effect. This affects a helicopter. In this example, the rotor blades are rotating clockwise, and the resultant torque effect tries to turn the helicopter anti-clockwise. We can use this effect, but first we need to be able to counteract it. For this, the helicopter is equipped with a tail rotor. To simplify the explanation, we will assume the tail rotor is a propeller. When the helicopter is balanced, with no yaw, the tail rotor provides an opposite force equal to the torque effect. The forces cancel each other out and no yaw is present. Reducing the tail rotor thrust allows the torque effect to yaw the helicopter in one direction in this case to the left. Increasing the tail rotor thrust beyond the torque effect gives an overall force that makes the helicopter yaw in the opposite direction, in this case to the right. 
Obviously the tail rotor needs to be controlled by the pilot. The pilot has two yaw pedals, left and right. Note that these are not rudder pedals, as a helicopter does not have a rudder. The operation of the pedals is basically simple. With the pedals central, or near to central, the helicopter has no yaw. Pushing the pedals right will cause a yaw to the right, and pushing down on the left pedal will cause a yaw to the left. That is basically how a helicopter operates. The video was designed to be a basic overview of helicopters, written by someone who has never flown a helicopter. We hope you enjoyed it.